going on everybody and welcome back to the World War History Bar. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today is the fourth installment of our little mini series, the Air Force Museum in depth. We are talking about the vengeance weapons, the V2 and V1 rockets. You can see the V2 behind us, the V1 right over here. Buzz bomb. If you guys do enjoy, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications, leave questions down below if you have them, and with that said, let's get into the video. So the V in Vengeance, and in, in the V1 or V2, actually stands for Vengeance Weapons. It's because that's what these were. These were part of the Vengeance Weapons uh, thing that the Germans started during during Your World War II. Your Gilton Schwaff or something like that? What was that, Jay? Your Gilton Schwaff. Yeah, that's what the V stood for. But here is the, well this is an American model, but this is basically the buzz bomb. This is what the V1 buzz bomb looked like. This was the first rocket that they, the Germans used. And it saw a pretty good, pretty good success. Very interesting. Now, it was, they call it buzz bomb it's because whenever it was flying over, say the British, uh, the British cities, during the Blitz, they, these bombs would be flown over the cities and the British would say, they, they, they would characterize it, the sound as a buzz it would, until it's until the engine stopped and then it would plummet to the ground. It was very eerie to hear that buzz. I'll, I'll put a video up on screen right now so you can hear what the buzz sounded like. But yeah, and here you can see is some information about it. I had to put on the wide angle lens for this next one we're gonna look at, but here you get a little look at the thing. We'll get a slow motion look at it so you can actually get a better view. Also here as well, some more information. We'll, I'll put up a slow motion for that. Then the next and the bigger one, the big V2 rocket. Yeah, it's huge. That's why I had to get a wide angle lens so you could just see this behemoth. This was the Germans' second, uh, second vengeance rocket that they made. And Chase, you said it was the first uh, it rocket. It was the first man made object to reach suborbital space flight. Interesting. And it was the Germans. Who knew? So this thing. German I engineer. Yeah. <laughs> it's. So, how, do you know exactly how these things were, like how they worked? Um, not entirely. You can look here, they have a whole. Because the earliest rocket engines were like super ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you take. I'll put videos up here of all these so you can see, but it, it's kind of like an interior look at what a V1 bomb's interior would look like. Then you have the V1's interior. So, I mean, there's a lot in there. It's rocket science. I'm not going to understand it. Probably not you either. But this, I mean, it's huge. This is right up next to it. I can't get the full thing in frame. I have to do this just to get a good view of it. But it's, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing here. Here's a, actually a picture here of a V1 rocket that was downed. These are all the parts that were assembled of it after they were able to recover it from after it was down. That is just some of the parts of one original one. And you can see here actually a V2 rocket on its stand getting prepared to launch. This is a post-war te testing of one in White Sands, New Mexico. I mean, it's huge. You're going to see someone standing next to it. I mean, those are people standing next to a V2 rocket. It just gives you an idea of the size of this behemoth. It's absolutely massive. You can see the rocket on the back. You can kind of see here on the back. I'm going to get a better angle of it. See if I can get a better angle from this side. Alright, so we just came to the other side of it and you can see the rocket parts on the back there. That's kind of the where the propulsion was for this big thing. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, that is the V2 rocket. On, we have another one here. It's the uh, 
a couple other Brandon's and Spawns we're gonna look at at the moment right now. Alright guys, so here is another thing that is very, if you know your World War II history, you'll know what this one is immediately. The ME-262, Germany's first attempt at a had a mass produced jet as a, of a mass produced jet fighter. It was a success. Unfortunately, it did not get off the ground very much. They, had, they did a couple. They used it a couple times, but it did not get very far here, though. So back when they were still testing it out, they were going to put this. It's called the BK-5 cannon. It is a 50 millimeter cannon. They were going to put in the nose of the fighter. But fun fact, it. <laughs> It has so much muzzle flash that it actually blinded the pilots. Here's what it would have looked like yeah, so they never with it in. Yeah, with the, they never used this thing. They never used it, but that's what it would have looked like with the with the gun in it. It's insane. Apparently there is stock testing footage of it being fired. And that's terrifying to think about. Yeah. <laughs> And here's what the jet engine would look like for the uh, for the ME262. So what that is is right here. This is kind of what they how they designed it up. It's I mean, it's, I I couldn't tell you how it works. Obviously, I'm not a genius. I don't know how this stuff works. But that's what their attempt at a jet engine was. It was really fast. I mean, you look at some of the info here I'll put up a thing here you can see it's quite the uh, quite the specs but very cool very cool that is the ME262 alright guys and our final thing we're gonna look at here in this video is this this is the ME163B Comet this was a rocket power defense fighter the Germans developed during the war the goal of this one was kind of just to be so fast that the uh, allies couldn't shoot at it, but it would only be able to fly like one single like flyby before it had to go back down to refuel. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it wasn't it. It was fast. It was fast as lightning, but it didn't step in the air for too and long. So it was also incredibly dangerous to fly because the the fuels that were used to ignite the motor down there were powered by water and hydrogen peroxide. Not 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 harmful when they're by themselves. But when you mix it together, if you if you do like a home experiment where you take hydrogen peroxide and water, you merge them together. Ooh, mm -hmm. It's it's incredibly volatile. They even use some acids in there too. And that also meant that upon landing you could either get shot or your plane would explode or in a few unfortunate cases tanks rupture open splashes on you and you just slowly dissolve to death not pretty mm. <laughs> not pretty not pretty at all but definitely insanely quick 